What is happening, guys? And welcome back to Unlike Moses One. Yes, yes, yes. We back. We back. Uh, today, this video is going to be a bit different, guys, because you know, I just thought to myself, you know, I was recently in Nigeria. Uh, what would say on holiday, right? And I was like, why not talk about my experience? You know, talk about what Nigeria taught me, the struggles and you know difficulties, and um lovely experiences in which i faced you know so you know that's what this video is going to be about you know things i found quite interesting you know i'm gonna share and discuss my you know experiences and you know love to get your y'all opinion at the end you know or in the comment section but yeah let's jump in one of my late mum's oldest friends would come over every day and you know just to check up on me you know and we just sit in a parlor there'd be times we'd just sit in a parlor and you know just reflect um on the state of the nigerian economy and the challenges faced in nigeria we would discuss in bewilderment over the rising prices of fuel cements and just daily necessities right cements cements that was roughly four thousand naira you know i think it was around 2022 when i was last in nigeria you know it was around what four to five thousand naira back then you know and one could actually that's per bag you know it was four thousand to five thousand naira back then probably cheaper but this time around when i went you know earlier on in january it was it actually increased to like thirteen thousand and it's probably still increasing you know as i speak you know so that was very shocking you know very very shocking when i found out it was thirteen thousand naira. like when money is good um say a thousand naira to one pound when money is good that's about like you know 13 quid and the average sort of nigerian can't really acquire 13 quid in their um daily salary you know um so that was quite surprising you know i'd imagine the increase in price to be a nightmare for those you know looking to build houses or invest in property you know they'd be deterred by such inflation perhaps the fall of the naira is what made cement companies like dangote to increase their prices you know and it just increased literally when i was there like first two weeks i was there it was like what 10k 11k and then it went up to like 12 13 like two weeks later it was insane honestly I, I couldn't believe it now let's talk about fuel in my two months in nigeria like i made sure i slept with electricity you know and lights just every night i had to sleep with electricity and light you know because you know, being from the western country i'm just so used to living in lights you know and like without lights it was just like i just couldn't no god please no no because of the heat you know mosquito you know and just one would develop like heat rash it was crazy man honestly i'm sure by now if you're west african or just from africa in general you know that having lights and electricity is a luxury you know it's a literal luxury you know because it doesn't come easily you know, shout out to the Nigerian government. 25 million people, Nigerians, you chose me. I've kept many of you hungry. Not only you, but your grandchildren accept it. But it's not true. But, you know, one had to get petrol, you know, for generator. And the rising petrol prices was just insane. When I came two years ago, when I was in Nigeria, again, I'm always going to reference when I'm in Nigeria, uh, when I was in Nigeria two years ago to um, earlier on this year in, in January. Um, when I was in Nigeria two years ago, fuel used to be like, what was it, 206 naira per litre in 2022. You know, that was when I was last in Nigeria. But now it's, gone up to like 600 to 640 naira per litre and i'm not just talking out of my ass here i literally used to go out every day and buy the um 
petrol, you know, I like it was just insane. The pandemonium and utter chaos in just literally buying petrol, you know, like there were queues. Y'all don't understand. It's just like sort of every man for themselves type um, um, living mentality in, in Nigeria, you know? So I found that very interesting. A daily problem I faced as well was extortion. Um, to my understanding, it's quite common in Nigeria. It's sort of a norm, right? There was a time I went to the bank and um, just readjust this. There was a time I went to the bank um, to, you know, get out some cash. And on the way back, I misplaced my phone. What? In what's called a kekenapep. It's like a sort of mini car, mini vehicle. I literally misplaced my phone. So the um, the driver of the kekenapep that I um, lost my phone, the driver of the vehicle, he had already gone. You know, luckily we got back to the stop because they have a sort of... Um, uh, if you'd like to call it garage, mini garage, that they park their kekena pips, right? Their mini cars. So we went back there and you're we like, oh, you know, it should have, you know, he lost his phone. My mum's um, closest friends, he was the one who sort of take care of me. He'd come every day and check up on me, bless him. Um, but yeah, so, you know, he, he played a pivotal part in helping me to retrieve my uh, lost phone you know so you know we went back to that um bus stop it's like a mini garage actually and we hollered his friends we went straight to his friend to the friends of the driver who went off with my phone like you'd think the decent thing to do um when someone's lost a phone or something like oh you know he's lost oh take it to the lost property or um you know lost and found type um, or, you know, try and find a way of contacting the owner, you know, but not in Nigeria, you have to understand, not in Nigeria. Um, so anyways, long story short, we went to the, um, how you'd like to call it, garage of the Kekenapep, met one of his mates who was also a Kekenapep driver, and we told him, look, you know, one of my phone is in one of, you know, the drivers, the other drivers, um, car, and we need it back. Like, please, please, we were pleading with this guy, you know. And the guy was like, "Okay, you know, let me call him." Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we tried to call my 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 mum's closest friend. Tried to call my phone with his number. He tried to call my phone. No response. There was no response. No picking. But when we got to the stop and told one of his mates, "Okay, can you um, is there a way of retrieving it?" He one of his mates called the guy and then he picked up. So he was just like, you got his phone, don't you? Why didn't you bring it back? Like, be coming back, be coming back. And he literally came back. I mean, probably two hours later, you know, um, but he wanted a fee. He wanted a fee for returning the phone. He wanted a fee, you know, extortion, you know. Um, and I was panicking. I'm not gonna lie. I was just like, "Oh my god, am I gonna lose my phone?" I have like very important stuff in there, you know. So that was a very frightful experience. Needless to say, you know, I paid um, the <coughs> fee in which he demanded for returning my phone, because he can do it for free or just common decency. You know, this experience taught me that, you know. It taught me to understand that Nigeria is a sort of developing country and, you know, not to be surprised by such acts. In fact, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria, they highlight that 63% of people living in Nigeria, which is roughly 133 million people, are multi damagedly poor. So any opportunity of making money, especially from a foreigner, is going to be taken. Nonetheless, I believe those experiences shouldn't constitute my time in Nigeria as a bad experience. The positives shouldn't be ignored. You know? Like I did have some like good positive, you know, experiences. Like I got to reconnect with friends and family. So it just gives me like joy.
thinking of the good experiences you know got to go to the beach make new friends you know um, go places i've never been before you know experience a bit of lagos you know it was very it's very fun some friends would come over when they could and just see me you know and would go places as well you know that was very fun because i don't normally like go places but i made sure you know to get some vlogs you know which is in my other youtube videos you can check it what do you lot think you know have you experienced similar you know do you know about the nigerian struggle and hardship honestly i saw a 10 year old fixing a bike it was insane yeah i was like that 10 year old is fixing a bike that is insane he had this little like uh what do they call it it's like a oh, it's like a it's almost like a screwdriver or some sort of but yeah it was that was insane man honestly honestly but what do you lots think have you experienced similar you know what are your thoughts what are your comments what are your views do you agree with me do you disagree i'd like to see them below you know like comment share subscribe and hit that notification bell and i will see you next time